Hey everyone, in this problem we have a system with six particles and you want to find the center of mass and the center of gravity of the system. What's tricky about this problem is that each particle is being affected by a different gravitational acceleration, g. So let's see. So part A and part B simply ask for the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of the system's center of mass. Now the process for finding the center of mass doesn't change. It's, it's still pretty straightforward. So for part A, for the x component of the center of mass, we'll just use the typical center of mass formula, where uh, along the x-axis we take each particle's coordinate, each particle's location along the in the x direction, multiplied by that particle's mass, and then divide it all by the total mass of the system. So for example, so for particle 1, that particle 1 is located on the y-axis, where x is equal to 0. So that's going to be 0 for its location times its mass m. So it just cancels out. And we can do the same thing for particles 2 and 3, because they're both also on the y-axis. So 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus, and then particle 4. Particle 4 is located off the y-axis over here which the problem tells us that there's a distance of two meters between each adjacent set of particles. So this distance is two meters. So then we've got two meters times m, the mass. And then particles five and six are also a distance of two meters from the y-axis. So plus two m plus two m. And then all this is divided by the total mass of the system, which is there are six particles, all of the mass of m, so we divide that by 6m. So if we do the math on this and divide, then we find an answer of 1, exactly 1. So the x component, the x coordinate of the center of mass, is located at 1 meter from the origin in the x direction. Now we'll do that exact same thing for the y component of the center of mass. The entire process is the same, so particle 1 is on the x-axis, so its y component is 0, plus uh, particle 2, which is a distance of 2 meters above that. So for particle 2, that's 2 times m, and for particle 3, that's all the way up here, so it's a distance of 2 meters from 1 to 2, then another distance of 2 meters from 2 to 3, so that is then a total of 4 meters times m, and the same process, particle 6 is 0 from the x-axis, plus 5, which is 2 meters from the x-axis, plus particle 4, which is 4 meters from the x-axis. So again, divide all this by 6 meters, and put it into a calculator, or just work it out mathematically yourself by hand and we find a distance of 2.00 meters. So the y-coordinate of the center of mass is at uh, 2 meters here. It's the center of where the mass is distributed. Now parts C and D ask for the center of gravity. Now normally, in most cases, the center of gravity is the exact same place as the center of mass. But because our g's are all funked up, uh, that's not going to be the case. And we'll have to do the math to figure out what it's going to be. Now fortunately, the formula for center of gravity is almost identical to the formula for center of mass, except the difference is that each m value is multiplied by the g value for that mass. So the formula then for the x center of gravity, xcog, is going to be equal to, the formula for it is going to be but x1, m1, g1, hang on, g1, plus x2, m2, g2, and so on and so forth. And it's all divided by that same thing, but without the x's. So m1, g1, plus m2, g2, da, 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 and so on and so forth, until we've iterated through all of the particles. 
So there's a little more to type in, and we can't just simplify the bottom half. We can't just simplify the denominator as a total mass because each individual m has a different g. So it's a little annoying. To, it's, it's a little more annoying to put into a calculator, but ultimately the process isn't too bad because we're given all the g values for each of those particles by this nifty little table here. And all the x values and all the y values in the case of part d, where we're looking for the y component of the center of gravity, we can, all, we, we can just assume that all those different values are the same as the x values and y values for the first two parts. Where particle 1 is located at the origin, so it's at a distance of 0, 0. Particle 2 is up a bit, but still on the, on the 0 component for the x-axis. So that's 0, 2. 3 is located at a point of 0, 4. 6 is located at a point of 2, 0. 5 is located at a point of 2, 2. And 4 is located at a point of 2, 4. So use these components for the x and y values, and then just use the m values and the g values given by the problem. Well, the m values aren't given to us, but since all the m's are the same, they're just going to cancel out. But the point is, once you've done that, once you've put that into your calculator, then we find an x component for the center of gravity of about 0 0.987 meters. And for the y component of the center of gravity, we find a y component of, hang on, let me find my mouse here, of 1.97 meters. So notice how these values compare to the center of mass. The x component of the center of gravity is a little further to the left than where the center of mass is, and the y component is a little further down. And this makes sense, because point 1, according to this table, is the point that has the largest g acting on it. So that makes sense. But yeah, so that's it for this problem. And I hope this problem helped you to give a bit of intuition on the difference between center of gravity and center of mass. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing, as that'll help me make more videos like this. And if you have a question, leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to help you out as best as I can. If you have a request for a future video, or you just like to hang out, my Discord server and my Twitch page are linked in the description below, so check those out if you'd like. But that's all for now, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.